Hey, uh, this is Rob Spear from the CMEP shop at cmepshop.com. And today we are here to teach you how to do a top end rebuild on a CMEPOL refrigerant recovery pump. Uh, today we are starting uh, with the machine lid already removed and we have already cleaned the machine. We clean the machine first with a little bit of uh, dish soap and then we, we go after it with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol, 99% isopropyl alcohol, just to get anything residues that might be on the machine. It's a good place to start. All right, so here we go, get ready. All right, we now have the miracle of a clean machine that fast on video. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just connect the gas lines. On the top end, um, we just hit one, two, three, um, and uh, and then do the other side, number four and number five, okay? So let's take those off. And this is a 19 millimeter wrench right here. I like one with a lot of leverage on it. This is a snap-on right here. Um, I like to buy good tools and use only high quality tools because otherwise stuff gets damaged just by using cheap tools. And next we're gonna grab, we've not disconnected all the gas lines from the machine. I'm gonna grab another impactor here. This has got a five millimeter impact driver bit on it. And I'm just gonna remove the cylinder heads on both sides. I sell a lot of these two little bits and tools in my shop. Please check it out or give me a call. We're now gonna take off the cylinders. This is a shot filled dead blow mallet. I like to give it a little hit here, kind of loosen it up, and then I can kind of twist off the cylinders. Okay, just set them down. Okay. You could tell this was a really loose fit coming that he's taken off. And you can also see how there's been a little bit of blow by in the case, how something somehow is blowing stuff past the seal. Um, these probably should have been replaced sooner. I'm now going to check my bearings. Um, this machine was uh, had a uh, rebuilt back in September. Still feeling pretty good. There, there, there's still some grease left in there, and I don't feel any notchiness. If I felt any notchiness in these when I'm moving them up and down, I would actually here at this point remove the case and then completely rebuild this part. But we're just going to do a top end today. So what we're gonna need now is we're gonna need our flame resistant cloth. Uh, these can be purchased at a plumbing store, uh, a plumbing supply store, and we're gonna put this over the machine. Now we're gonna take our map gas torch. This is map gas, not propane. Map gas, it's really, really hot. Twice as hot as propane. Does the job much faster. We need to get this screw heated up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit so that the special thread locking compound will actually break free and we don't strip the screw when we come out. So now I'm just gonna torch this up right here and get this really hot. Now, if I take the heat off and I grab my screw gun on here and I start trying to remove that and I find that there's any type of resistance, I'm then gonna just remove the screw gun and apply more heat. The screw should come out easily. It shouldn't be difficult, okay? Yeah, we got a little bit of smoke. Okay, so now we've got, so now here we go. This is a screw gun. We've now got a three millimeter impact driver bit attached here. Um, we're gonna make sure to go in reverse. What I'm gonna do the first couple is I'm gonna kind of give it a quick pulse. Oops, I'm gonna go the right way. Quick pulse. Now that I know that it's actually free enough, I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, and we don't touch that, it's hot. Uh, I recommend never reusing these screws. You'll notice my kits come with all replacement screw hardware. Uh, if Sometimes if you pull these apart, put them back together with the same screw hardware, 
you end up stripping that screw the second time you take it out. So we just don't bother with all new screws in my, my comprehensive rebuild kits, okay? So now we've got that broken free. We're gonna knock off that piston top there. It's hot, so I'm not gonna touch it. Um, if there was any, if this thing was kind of stuck on there, what I'd actually do is I'd grab my chisel. I'm gonna put a, let's put a new one on here. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my chisel. There's, a, there's the angled side and there's the flat side. I'm gonna put the flat side up against the aluminum in between this crack right here and the angled side towards the stainless steel cap. And then I'm just gonna give it a little wrap and that'll usually just fall right off. Um, if it, that's if it's stuck, okay? Now let's repeat this on the other side. Ooh, oh, oops. Sorry about that, forgot this. Never forget this, that was just a video error. Okay, again, we're going to grab our screw gun and I'm going to give it a couple pulses. And it, see it's breaking free there just a little bit, so I know it's gonna good to go. So now I'm gonna pull out the rest of the way. <clears throat> okay, this one looks like it's gonna be a little tougher. So now we're, you're gonna get to see this again. Again, the flat side of the chisel up against the aluminum. We don't wanna damage that aluminum, okay? If we flip the screw, if we hit this the other way, we could potentially ch damage the aluminum. And there you go, that's how we remove that. Okay, um, we're gonna take a break here. We're gonna get everything cleaned up. We're gonna use an ultrasonic parts cleaner and we're going to, uh, uh, we're gonna use an ultrasonic parts cleaner to clean everything up and use a bunch of alcohol. Uh, uh, what we're gonna do here is first, we're gonna start, these, this, is a, this is your cylinder head. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put this in the ultrasonic parts cleaner. And then after we put it in the ultrasonic parts cleaner with the special solvent, we are then gonna take this and put it into a bucket of denatured alcohol. Inside, inside this is a, is a carbon spring. If we pull it out of the uh, ultrasonic and just leave it in the open uh, air dry, it, the carbon spring inside will rust and then your valve springs will go bad. That's why we immediately take it from the ultrasonic and we'll put this into a vat of, um, of, of alcohol, of isopropyl denatured. It's just gotta be good high potency alcohol, okay? Okay guys, we've now cleaned everything. We've pulled everything out of the ultrasonic. Uh, the first thing we've got, uh, the first thing we did is we blew these out. Uh, we, it, we took our cylinder heads, blew them out, and dropped them into this vat of 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, this all, this will break all the water free, and then uh, 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 before we install, we'll actually blow these out and do another test on them. We'll get there in a minute. Um, we have, we are about to do our top end kit. This is the top end kit we sell. It's one of the more complete kits on the market. It actually comes with replacement um, um, lock washers, as well as your cylinder O-rings um, and uh, the, the general stuff everybody else sells them with. Um, we've already gone to the liberty of replacing the um, lock washers on all of our screws, uh, which we also um, ultrasonic. We also took off uh, we also, when we do it here at the shop, we also take off this connection here and we ultrasonic this and then blow these out and clean these too. Um, just makes it nice and nice, nice and better. Uh, we still have to do one more prep situation on uh, the rods before we can actually do our installation. Um, what we've got here is we've got a five millimeter um, bottom tap on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this through on the, um, on the rod. We have to get the threads on the rod clean. The thread locking compound requires direct connection to the metal to have the chemical reaction required to actually um, make it uh, seize up so the screw doesn't come out. So if you've got dirty threads on your machine and you put your thread locking compound on there, put it together, it might not necessarily hold. So you've gotta do this one step, okay? So I'm gonna take my screw gun. I've got my screw gun with a clutch. I've got the cut set really light to number four. We wanna make sure we don't break off the tap inside the rod. So I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, make sure we gotta go forward. 
okay. I'm just gonna go slow and it'll guide itself in. Now we're gonna pull it back out. Okay, give it a blow. And then we'll do the other side. Oops. Okay. Now we've got clean threads. Okay, so we'll prep for our screws. Um, first thing we're gonna do is now we're going to uh, prep our cylinders. We're gonna put on our spacers and our O-rings. Now, I like to use, uh, your, your kit comes with thin spacers and thick spacers. I like to, at the shop, we start out with two thick spacers, too thick, and you can tell when you put them like, this one's thicker than the other one. This one's really kind of flimsy. So these are the thin ones, these are the thick. So I'm gonna grab two thick for each for here and put, it, and put one thin on top, okay? Two thick, one thin, boom. Now I'm gonna put my O-ring on. I'm gonna put my next O-ring on. And now I'm gonna go grab some high temperature grease. The grease doesn't really do anything except for facilitate installation. And I'm just gonna put a thin film right on that little O-ring right there. This will facilitate installation of the, of the uh, cylinder into the body of the machine as well as make it easier to remove. Um, you'll have extras of these every time, just save them. Uh, if you end up running your machine after a top end and it makes a knocking sound, you might need to add one more thin spacer underneath, underneath one of these cylinders, okay? So now we've got these together. I'm actually gonna install them onto the machine just like this. I've got the piston bottom on, um, and now I'm just gonna install my raw or my cylinder into the machine. And I'm actually gonna just push and twist. I'm not gonna force it, because I wanna make sure I don't damage that O-ring seal. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. And just, just carefully just put it in there, okay? Boom, that looks nice and beautiful, okay. So, we've got that prepped. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piston top, okay? We're gonna take our piston ring. You'll notice the piston ring is concave, on, and we're gonna take that concave side, and we're gonna put it forward towards this, towards the front. So the concave go faces out, okay? Convex faces toward, concave forces out. You just push that over and you'll see it attaches pretty darn well. Then we're gonna take our screw, a replacement stainless steel screw, brand new screw. Now, I, again, I do not ever recommending reuse, reusing screws. And we're gonna take our metal lock black. This is the special OEM thread locking compound. It's the only stuff you should use. It's the only stuff reliable um, to keep these machines together so that under the high temperature operating conditions that they don't come apart. This is what the manufacturer uses. This is what I use. It's the only thing you should use. We are now gonna take it and we are going to put a bead, a not shy amount bead of the thread locking compound on there. Don't worry about it if it's a lot, it's important, okay? Uh, come over here, Robbie. And so now you can look down there and you can see we're pretty much got our centered, our centered spacer down there. And I'm just gonna take my, I'm just gonna take this and put it in there, boom. Oops. We need to, uh, we need to rotate the machine a little bit so that it, uh... yeah, thank you. Okay, we're gonna need to rotate the machine a little bit. You wanna do this when the rod is all the way at its fully extended position. There we go, it's now fully extended. Now I'm just gonna insert this here, take my screw gun, make sure I'm in the right position, and I'm just gonna thread it in there, boom, okay. Give it a couple taps, and now we're gonna duplicate that on the other side, again. Piston top, piston ring, concave side facing facing the stainless steel, boom. Insert your screw, boom. Insert this, boom. Okay, don't be shy. Never be shy with the thread locking compound. Okay, and now we'll just put this here, in there, and screw it down, and it'll form right to that. It'll form right to that. Uh, that sometimes happens, don't worry about it. We we're gonna double check that. Okay, I'm happy. 
wipe off a little bit here, boom. And now we'll install our PTFE seal. Boom, very important, don't forget this. Sometimes they, sometimes they fit snug, sometimes you have to tap them a little bit with your mallet to put them in there. Go ahead and just put them on. And um, boom, now, now we're good there. So now we actually have to, our next step here is we're gonna, um, we're gonna blow out our cylinder heads uh, with air and we're gonna do a little check just to make sure they're moving freely. Um, and so uh, let's go over to the air compressor gas line. So we've now, this has been soaking for a few minutes. This is the alcohol, make sure there's no water in there. So now we're just gonna uh, I've got a little rubber hose on the front of my air gun and I'll put it over here on the output valve and just test it, make sure it's not sticky. Just a little bit of air. You, you don't wanna like go full blast on the air pressure because you don't wanna damage the spring in there. But that actually just drying that out. Now we'll go to the other side. And again, I'm just gonna do light taps of air. I, see how it does that? I wanna make sure that that valve opens really easily uh, without too much air pressure. If it's sticky, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up uh, doing an overhaul on this, going back to the ultrasonic, then reassembling it, potentially putting new springs as well, um, since I'm in there. But then I'm gonna blow that out, make sure there's no water in there. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, now I'm going to repeat that procedure for the other head. That one was a little sticky. It seems to be okay now. Let's do over here again, light air pressure. Looks like we got a little bit of a little bit of schmutz still on the head. I mean, I could probably ignore that, but that's not what we do here. I'm gonna grab some uh, green abrasive, uh, green abrasive pad, like you know, the spongy pad type material, and just kind of give it a little bit of a little bit of love. The same. Here, boom. Okay, now we're good. Now, what I like to do. I find it, I find this makes it easy, is what I'll do is I'll just take two of the screws. Again, we've already replaced the uh, the lock washers. Never reuse a lock washer. They are not reusable. They are trash if they've been used once. Now I'm just gonna insert two screws, uh, kitty corner in each of my cylinder heads in prep for installation. Okay, we've made sure that we've got our, our PTFE cylinder on here. Looks like we're going for the right side first. Um, go insert your, insert this in here like this, boom and then put it up there. Grab your five mil again. It's kind of hard doing this on the camera here, but, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these in slowly and make sure that my cylinder head's hitting square on my cylinder, okay guys? And just, to, just you know, a little, bit of a little bit of a time and a cross pattern, okay? And then after that, I'll insert the final two screws And then we'll do the X pattern to tighten, just to bring them down all the rest of the way. X pattern, baby, all right. And then we're gonna repeat that procedure on this side, okay? little clumsy because I'm doing this on video. Not, not quite in front of me. So now we've got this going. So we've got that attached now. Let's just put our gas lines on. I'll start with the top one today. 
and we're just gonna get everything inserted with one thread, okay? Or, or just a couple threads on each one. We don't wanna tighten anything down yet. Okay, and here's our bottom. Uh, there's two. There's a few different generations of these. You'll notice that this one's got a long on one side and a shorter on the other. The shorter side goes to cylinder head one. The long side goes to cylinder head two. On older machines, these will be even and, and, and it won't matter which way you go. Um, okay, so just get it on there. And I'm, I got both sides kind of inserted portion a little bit and there we go. Make sure you start threads. Do not force that. If you force the threads on, you will cross thread the thread, you will cross thread and then next thing you know, you'll be calling me up asking for some fittings. So um, do not force anything, okay? Boom, boom. Now let's tighten everything down. I'm gonna grab our 19 again. Um, excuse me, I'm gonna turn this my way, just like I do. And we're just gonna bring this in good, good and tight. You know what I mean? Don't throw your entire arm into it. And, but we're gonna go, you gotta go good and tight. And then we'll do the other side. I forgot to do that. Gener always make sure you start that. In this video, I did not have that start that thread before I tightened anything else on. Always get it all three started before you do anything. If you're having any trouble with getting things aligned, Unscrew the four screws here just a little bit. That'll remove the head off and you'll get a little bit of play. And then that will allow you to get the thread started easier. Then you re-bolt that back down and then you go for your final tightening procedure, okay? And we're just gonna check that. And now we gotta do our final top one here. Okay. Check these two babies out, just make sure they're good. Okay, that was the top end job. Now we're gonna test it, okay? So basically we're gonna plug it in. Uh, this is obviously not explosion proof. We only recommend the use of explosion proof plugs. It's up to the client to figure that out. Um, if you're not getting much airflow, uh, it's probably because this shutoff valve has been melted and it's the orifice is closed. Uh, in which case, you're gonna pull this off and replace this. This is a $40 part. Um, this is a very, very common part to replace. It will, it can definitely slow your recovery down. So if you're not getting good airflow on your out, just replace this. <coughs> okay, now we're gonna that up. Now we're gonna run it up. Moves up super fast. Our high pressure switch locked. Our needle is sitting solid. Boom. Okay, that means this pump is finished. Now, if we uh, if we saw this needle moving down, the first thing I would check was I'd cover this right here with my thumb, uh, and then and then I'll count to ten, and I pull my hand off. If I pulled my hand off and I hear a, psh, that means that the shut off valve is bad and you have to replace it. Okay, say, it's, say that's fine and your needle's still dropping. Then I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm put it on the output here. Okay, I'm gonna count to 10, let it build up pressure, and then go, if it goes psh, that means that I've got a leak. And that leak is actually in the cylinder head valves itself. In which case we would pull the heads, rebuild the cylinder head valves uh, situation, make sure they're all clean and put together and they have all new parts, put them together, slap it on, and then we would do this test again until we found that leak, okay? And guys, so that's that's the CMEP shop's top end job. If you have any questions at all, give us a call. We love selling parts. We love helping people. Um, just give us a call and uh, yeah, all right. Good luck, uh, be safe. And uh, yeah, just be really safe, guys. Thank you, cheers.